Well, it was more than just Fleet Street and Whitehall that were in a panic. Even an Anglican bishop came out against a surprise bid to buy the Telegraph. The 600 million pound takeover was led by the former CNN president, Jeff Zucker. It's a joint venture, American private equity firm, Redbird Stake, uh, 25 percent. The rest going to the IMI fund based in Abu Dhabi which for some was controversial. IMI is led by Sheikh Mansur bin Zayed Al Nayan, best known as the owner of the Manchester City Football Club, but he is also the vice president of the United Arab Emirates. When the story broke last November, a source inside the Telegraph paper quipped to The Guardian, we've had sports washing. Are we now seeing news washing? Fears growing of soft power and conflicts of interest selling the name of the broadsheet. The Telegraph's own cameras recorded the debate back in January in the House of Commons. The concern here is not foreign ownership, it is foreign state ownership. And in this situation, you cannot separate shake and state. And these are our concerns. Well, nicknamed the Tory graph, the paper is hugely influential among conservatives. As the Tories look set to see their 14 years in power come to an end, there has been infighting between far right and centrist factions. Here's Lewis Goodall of the news agents. The Telegraph and its editorial disposition and attitude, and the Spectator as well, will be absolutely pivotal. So, who owns it really matters. So, this is all part of the kind of preamble to that fight and making sure from each side that the Telegraph is on their side of the column. And then this week, the British government said it would refer the takeover for a lengthy review. The only catch is that a law banning foreign governments owning newspapers is due to come into force before that review is finished. Let's speak to our guests. The Financial Times global media editor, Daniel Thomas, joins us, as does Simon Nixon, former leader writer at The Times. Hello to you, uh, gentlemen. Thank you for speaking to us today. Um, Daniel, just want to begin with you. Does this six-month review uh, by the government, the government has requested, effectively kill the bid? Uh, it, uh, the, the bid is, is dead. I mean, we're just waiting now for uh, Redbird IMI to, to raise the white flag and, you know, announce some sort of sale or, or some sort of process in which it can elegantly uh, extricate itself from this, 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 this situation because it's become uh, quite the saga and potentially increasingly embarrassing for the uh, for the, both the U.S. Uh, uh, hedge, uh, the U.S. fund manager, which which runs Redbird IMI, as well as the big money behind it, which is from Abu Dhabi. Uh, Simon, a lot of journalists uh, came down against this bid. You had a different perspective, like Jeff Zucker. You were saying it was misunderstood. Can you explain that? Uh, yeah, I should just. Yeah, I missed some of uh, the, the conversation just now, but um, uh, I, I think one of the things that I, I think got um, uh, lost in this debate, and we can debate why, was that um, uh, this was this wasn't a straightforward takeover in the, in the sense that uh, the Abu Dhabi government was going to, or Abu Dhabi was going to take a a, um, uh, a, a sort of voting stake in the company. It was a private equity bid, which is a very different um, you know, proposition. Uh, a short-term or medium-term investment uh, designed to be sold, and Abu Dhabi was only ever going to be a passive investor uh, in this um, transaction, a limited partner, to give a technical term, which has very precise legal meaning in UK law. Uh, so uh, I don't. Um, um, I think that uh, that there was more that the, the opposition to this deal was um, far more political than it was. Uh, um, really, than uh, the, the question of yes. foreign ownership. Simon, sorry, on that, uh, the opposition, would you call it political, ideological, would you call it xenophobic? Sorry, I missed that. Just wondering if you would cost, call, call the opposition to this bid uh, beyond political. Was it ide ideological? Was it xenophobic? No, I think that, uh, that, I think that the, the game was sort of given away by Andrew Neil in an interview that he gave uh, um, a sort of rather shouty interview he gave to Newsnight, a British TV uh, show, uh, a few weeks ago, where he uh, referred to the uh, Spectator and the Telegraph as being part of the sort of at the centre of an ecosystem of conservative thought in Britain. I think that uh, this was far more, uh, as Lewis Goodall said in that clip you put showed earlier, um, about um, protecting that ecosystem. Uh, I think if if the Abu Dhabi uh, investor had been uh, supporting a bid by a right wing private equity bid in Britain, we wouldn't be having this discussion. So, now. so the problem is not the shake. The problem was Jeff Zucker. Um, Daniel, um, what are Jeff Zucker's options right now? 
Uh, well, well, Jeff is, uh, you know, currently in New York and I'm, I'm working out what to do next. He's got, uh, you know, lots of advisors, uh, uh, including uh, George Osborne, a former chancellor of, of, of this country, uh, taking him through the different options. But I think ultimately he, he has to he has to get rid of the Abu Dhabi money. That's that's pretty clear now. This new law is coming in uh, and that will forbid it, uh, it, it, the, the amendment. The actual details of the law came out last night and they're as, as strict as you can possibly imagine. The definition of foreign ownership, for example, is stricter than our national security laws. For, and foreign this is state a, a, ownership, to be clear. For, it, sorry, foreign state ownership, yeah. It's strict on our national security laws, which gives you a sense of how, uh, you know, they're really, they're really, they're really cracking down on, on media ownership in this country. Um, so, and, and then plus that, they, they, they've set the, the bar of, of any foreign state owner of the media at zero, which is quite, people were expecting like maybe five, 10 percent or having some sort of um, way for, for some money to come back into the, into the media sector. But no, it's literally zero. So there's no chance of Abu Dhabi money being able to use in this in this transaction. So he either sells to one of the many underbidders uh, in the auction, which he derailed with this kind of audacious uh, attempt back in November, or he brings in uh, perhaps uh, some of his own investors. He, he you know, uh, uh, Redbird runs money out of the US and they have access to US and Canadian pension funds, for example. So you could potentially bring in that money as well. Uh, what did you make, Simon, uh, of um, that, these the, 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 the amendments to this law? Does it make it look to people on the outside of Britain, does it make it look like the country is closed for business? Well, that, well yeah, I that, think that it, oh, oh. Go I ahead, think Sam. that it, it, I think it, it, it certainly shows how, um, uh, how difficult it was to shut this bid down. They had to go to, you know, to draw this law so tightly. Uh, but I, I think it does send a very, a very bad signal to um, to, um, to the rest of the world that um, uh, that that some, you know, even passive investments are um, are, are no longer uh, welcome in the media sector. I think it's uh, um, it will be seen as an element of protectionism, and I suspect that um, that, that, that won't be lost. Uh, Abu Dhabi is being sought after for other investments in Britain, and uh, uh, it's bound to have some impact on the way that um, the country is viewed. Yeah, I want to get both of you guys' reaction. Um, the Spectator's editor, Fraser Nelson, he made the round speaking out against this uh, takeover. I want you to listen to what he said. Now, the government was, was compromised in two ways. One is that it's seeking quite a lot of Emirati money itself. So the Emiratis have promised to invest in things like Sizewell C, not literally that, but other big infrastructure projects for which the government has pretty much given up on being able to fund by democratic methods and things it needs to get money from sovereign wealth funds, usually autocracies. So you've got the government itself as an institution hoping for more Emirati money and therefore having an a vested interest in keeping the Emirati suite and not vetoing them as part of the telegraph. Daniel, how did you feel? Did you feel like the British government was compromised? Well, I, th I think you have to, um, uh, first of all, split the British government, which is obviously Sunak's uh, 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 government, and, and the backbenchers, because there's two sort of separate, um, separate uh, uh, channels there. Uh, I, I, you know, the, 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 br the British establishment has been courting Middle Eastern money, Abu Dhabi money, Qatari money for, for years. And, you know, if anything has been ramping up that sort of desire to bring in cash from abroad, and, and, and Fraser, uh, you know, who's Incredibly well plugged in, is in, is totally right in 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 that uh, in that in that account. At the same time, you know that there is this is a this is a, a country which has always attracted foreign uh, foreign investment and and we have to as a as a country post Brexit particularly we're sort of reliant on on, on our on our international partners. So I think I think there is a you know there's a real desire to bring money in. It's not just um, Sizewell. There's also Abu Dhabi money coming into our life sciences sector. Yeah, you know, many would argue life sciences strategically is far, far more important than a, than a, than a, a right-leaning national newspaper. And yet we seem to have absolutely no problem whatsoever as a country bringing money into these sort of key strategic uh, life sciences business and sectors like that. So, you know, so the, 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 there is a, a slightly sort of uh, a, a, a odd thing going on here, which which is like one rule for, for specifically for a right-wing conservative affiliated newspaper and another rule for everything else. Yeah, uh, Simon, where do you think uh, this goes from here? Uh, well, I think it's um, actually I think in, in, the, in the first instance, it's bad news for the Telegraph because uh, uh, this was an investor who uh, was preparing, proposing to put a lot of money into uh, into into the news brand uh, at a time when the industry is facing a lot of difficulties. 
uh, you know, to a lot of people think it's sort of rather eccentric in a way to be putting money into um, a legacy uh, newspaper at a time when uh, there's lots of um, innovation going on in media and lots of uh, uh, new, you know, new, new sources of influence. But um, uh, so I think that you know the un the underbidders will, um, you know, none, I'm not sure any of them are, you know, bringing new investment that way. So I think it's bad for the Telegraph. I suspect that um, um, it'll be hard for uh, uh, for Redbird to recoup uh, the money it's put in. Um, uh, but I think, as I say, I think ultimately it's it's um, it, it's bad for Britain. I think Britain's uh, reputation as an investment destination is very poor at the moment. You only have to look at the FTSE 100, which has barely budged, even as the rest of the world's stock markets have soared over the last year or five years or any time frame you care to look at, really. Uh, so I think it's bad. Um, uh, it, it's bad. It, 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 say it just reinforces the idea that uh, Britain has become a sort of unpredictable and unstable place to do business. The fact that Parliament is bringing in emergency laws to block a bid uh, for something, uh, you know, as, mm -hmm. as uh, niche as this is, 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 is not a good look. Simon, uh, thank you for your time. Daniel, I want to thank you as well. FT's Daniel Thomas, Simon Nixon. You can read his newsletter, Wealth of Nations, on Substack. We're going to finish uh, with our quote of the week. The late, great British intellectual Christopher Hitchens once said, I became a journalist partly so that I wouldn't ever have to rely on the press for my information. That's it for Scoop this week. Thank you for watching, and please stay tuned to France 24.